Our newscast tonight. North Korea goes back on their initial plans to send a cheer squad to the Incheon Asian Games. The nation's prime minister takes aim at lawmakers for leaving dozens of key economic bills on their desks, calling them to put aside their differences and get to work. The WHO names that the number of Ebola viruses cases could eventually reach 20,000. Hopes rise as an experimental vaccine will soon go through human testing. Stay with us for these stories and more. It's 6 p.m. on Friday, August 29th here in Korea, live from Seoul. I'm Na hyun -gyo. And I'm Daniel Chen. Thank you for joining us. Well, Prime Minister Jong won took to the airwaves this morning to urge lawmakers to stop bickering and get going on passing a slew of pending bills. Mm -hmm. Those bills include special legislation which would lay out the details of an investigation into April's ferry sinking. Jim young -gil has our top story. Prime Minister Chang won says there's no more time to waste in passing long-pending legislation aimed at stimulating the economy. At least 30 economic stimulus-related bills are related to improving the livelihoods of the people. Job creation and the economic recovery are lagging. Now is the time to get them passed. Chang's remarks coincide with government efforts to reboot the economy. In recent weeks, the finance ministry has introduced a set of stimulus measures along with proposals for tax code revisions to induce money flows from businesses to households in the form of investment, salary hikes and dividend payouts. The prime minister also urged lawmakers to pass the one piece of legislation that is keeping all the others held up, the one that would set up a probe into April's ferry tragedy. The rival parties remain deadlocked over the special Seoul ferry bill, with the main opposition New Politics Alliance for Democracy taking to the streets in protest and boycotting all parliamentary proceedings. The ruling's Henry party is digging in its heels and demanding that the opposition get back to work. The months-long partisan divide has indefinitely postponed annual parliamentary audits and pushed thousands of other bills awaiting review into the shadows. Kim young Arirang News. The housing market in Seoul is showing signs of picking up after some government regulations were eased earlier this month. Although it's traditionally an off month for home buying, the Seoul Housing Information Plaza says the number of housing transactions in the Korean capital is expected to surpass 6,200 in August, which would be the highest total since 2009. This comes after the government's new economic team, led by Finance Minister Choi kyung hwan rolled out expansionary policies, chief among them being eased limits on the amount of money people can borrow from banks when purchasing a home. So there are positive signs from the real estate market, but the other sectors might not be doing so well. Industry output for July barely rose at all, while business sentiment among manufacturers dropped for the fourth consecutive month. Song ji reports. The country's industrial output kept expanding in July, but the lackluster game was yet another indicator that the much-anticipated recovery in domestic demand is not kicking in. Statistics Korea said Friday that production for all industries picked up by 0.2 percent last month, with the manufacturing sector expanding by more than 1 percent from June, helped by robust activities in the automobile and oil refinery industries. The pace of gains for all industries slowed considerably from 2.2 percent in June. Production and service sector inched down 0.4 percent from a month earlier, with activities among wholesalers and retailers and the financial industry all contracting by more than 1 percent. A separate indicator confirmed that Korean manufacturers are not expecting a full economic recovery anytime soon. The Bank of Korea announced Friday that the business sentiment index for manufacturers for August stood at 72, the lowest figure in more than a year and the fourth consecutive monthly draw following April's deadly ferry disaster. Bank officials say businessmen remain worried about weak domestic demand and abundant uncertainties in and out of the country. A reading below 100 means pessimists outnumber optimists. 
Consumers, however, expect rosier days ahead, with consumer sentiment at 107, up two points from the previous month. Song Jisun, Arirang News. Back here in the nation, the remains of 18 Koreans who passed away in the Soviet Union decades ago have finally come home. Forced into hard labor during Japan's colonization of the Korean Peninsula, they were never able to leave Sakhalin, an island in Russia's Far East. Our Shin Zemin has their story. Some 70 years after they were forcibly sent to the Soviet Union by Japan, 18 Koreans have finally come home. The ashes of the 18 were handed over by Russia to Korea on Thursday. They're just a fraction of the 30,000 Koreans who were forcefully drafted to Sakhalin in the late 1930s by Japan during its colonization of the Korean Peninsula. Not even liberation in 1945 meant freedom for the victims. Many were not able to return to Korea for a number of reasons. Being at the scene showed me how many hardships Korean went through back then. It's tragic that they weren't able to come home before they died. My father passed away at the age of 86, and now I am 86. Bringing him back at this age makes it all the more special. Forced into harsh labor conditions at construction sites and coal mines during the war, many of the Korean victims were the target of mass slaughters towards the end of it. The return of these 18 Korean nationals is the second such event following the return of one victim last year and comes as a result of consultations between the Korean and Russian governments. Before bringing the remains to Korea, the families of the deceased were able to witness the excavation of the remains and were even able to conduct funerals. It's the first time they've been allowed to do both. The ashes of the now 19 Korean victims now lie at National Manghyang Cemetery in Chungcheongnam-do province, which serves as a resting place for Koreans who resided and passed away in foreign lands. The nation's foreign ministry and the Commission of Forced Mobilization under Japanese colonialism are working to bring the remains of the thousands of other Korean victims home in the near future. Shin Zemin, Arirang News. Predictable in its unpredictable ways, Pyongyang changes its mind again, and now they say they do not want to send a cheerleading squad to the Incheon Asian Games set to kick off in South Korea next month. Mm -hmm. The regime blames us all for walking back its earlier decision. Yurian has more. Laying the blame at Seoul's feet for its concerns over the cheering team, the vice chairman of North Korea's National Olympic Committee officially announced on Thursday that Pyongyang was taking back its decision to send a cheerleading squad to the upcoming Asian Games. The South expressed concern over our sending of the cheerleading squad, and they raised concern, so we decided not to send them for the 17th Asian Games. He added the committee's decision was conveyed to South Korea when the two sides met last week for working-level talks to discuss this very issue. This unexpected development comes after weeks of tense negotiations over Pyongyang's decision to send a 350-member cheerleading squad, which would have been more than twice the size of North Korea's contingent of athletes. While Pyongyang kept saying the move was to promote goodwill, the two Koreas have been at odds over who would have paid for the group during their stay in South Korea. Despite the move, North Korea says its athletes will participate in the games. The latest turn of events goes against expectations of a more conciliatory attitude from North Korea following the end of the joint military drills between South Korea and the United States this week. In the short term, it's inevitable inter-Korean ties will get worse. But if the Koreas fail to improve relations, they will feel pressure from inside and outside of the country. So in the long run, there's a high chance the two will begin dialogue. The South Korean government did not comment directly on North Korea's announcement, only confirming that it was informed. Officials added that they will continue to take all steps necessary to make sure the North Korean team can participate in the Asian Games, which kick off on September 19th in Incheon. Yurian, Arirang News. 
Well, there is one other sporting event that North Korea regime is paying extra attention to. It's a pro wrestling competition taking place this weekend in Pyongyang. That's right. Uh, some experts say it's another sign that the communist regime is trying to enhance relations with Washington mm -hmm. and Tokyo through sports diplomacy. Our Kim Hyun bin has this report. Several athletes arrive at Pyongyang Airport. They're all pro wrestlers here to take part in an international wrestling competition. There are some familiar faces, such as Bob Sapp and Jerome Lee Banner, who are well known in the wrestling world. But all eyes are on Japan's wrestler turned politician, Antonio Inoki. I believe this event will be successful. I hope it serves as a stepping stone for international peace. The head of North Korea's International Olympic Committee, Chang Ung, greeted the athletes upon their arrival. North Korean state media has been extensively promoting the competition, airing previews and detailed introductions. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is known to take advantage of sports diplomacy to promote his country. But some experts say this could be a means to enhance relations with Japan. As Inoki had a meeting with the secretary of the Central Committee of the Workers' Party of Korea, Kang Sok Chu, experts believe he might also be acting as a go-between for the Japanese government. The pro wrestling event comes as two nations look to improve bilateral ties, especially by dealing with the issue of Japanese nationals kidnapped by North Korean agents in the 1970s and 80s. Seoul-based Yonhap News reported, quoting diplomatic sources in Tokyo, that the two countries face difficulties in making progress in their government-level talks. Kim Hyun bin Arirang News. Now, the joint military drills between Seoul and Washington came to an end on this Friday, a day earlier than originally planned. But North Korea says if South Korea were sincere about improving cross-border ties, Seoul would have to put a permanent halt to the exercises. The North branded the drills as practice for an invasion and said South Korea needs to make up its mind on whether it wants dialogue or war. Now, if the choice is dialogue, the North said all future joint exercises with the U.S. would need to be stopped. Now, of course, this comes after Seoul proposed holding high-level talks with the North earlier this month, which went unanswered. And for more on North Korea, we are joined live in the studio by Arirang's special commentator, Professor Song se of Kyung University. Well, thank you for making time for us, Professor. Good to be here. Well, North Korea has crossed out the possibility of sending a cheer squad to South Korea. Maybe they will change their mind again, but for now, mm -hmm. that's what we have. Right. The regime says uh, it's about the money, but is it really? Well, uh, the, in the past, the South has borne those kind of expenses for the cheering squads, but this time the South has made it clear that they were not going to do that and follow the, the uh, norms of the, the international uh, sports events. Well, uh, that could be true. But it could be an excuse. Uh, Pyongyang has been uh, uh, posturing uh, with the South Korea in their talks to uh, improve the situation. I think the North wants to talk, South wants to talk, but in their weird game of uh, kind of tit for tat, the uh, North has always raised tensions whenever they want to talk and uh, get the upper hand in that negotiation. Mm -hmm. So we might be seeing an upcoming inter Korean talks, but this could be a little telltale sign in that aspect. Then. Right. In a, in a kind of paradoxical sense, mm -hmm. the harder line they take, more harder line they take, it might indicate that they want to talk uh, mm -hmm. further. Well, what about the pro wrestling event? I mean, it, does, does that, uh, what is Pyongyang hoping to gain from hosting that event? I think the old indications are that they're trying a any kind of channels to get to the outside. They remember that they have facing they have faced this hardline uh, stances from the South government and the United States as well. So I, I think they're using the sports diplomacy in the wake of uh, Asian Games and the pro wrestling uh, match to say that the, this kind of soft uh, posturing or or. Uh, soft diplomacy might uh, get the, the dialogue rolling in, in a more friendlier sense. Mm -hmm. Well, the recent annual joint uh, military exercise between South Korea and the U.S. Uh, military Freedom Guardian was uh, stopped a day earlier than originally scheduled. Right. Uh, does that tell us something? I think that uh, you could say that it was a gesture from the South and, and the U.S. Uh, sending into the North that uh, uh, we're not going to provoke you, and we really want to sit down and talk. 
I, I think the telltale sign was before it was stopping. Uh, there was not much of fanfare when the exercise uh, started. So uh, there was a lot of speculation that uh, South and the North is be being a little bit cautious hmm. about not provoking the North. So if it is a gesture, then of course uh, North could uh, identify that there is a willingness on both sides. Mm -hmm. But then North Korea is coming back saying, I mean, you would have, if you wanted to talk, you would have stopped earlier, so we don't know what's going on there. But I mean, what about the South Korean media outlet reports about Washington and Pyongyang holding uh, closed door consultation talks earlier in the month? I mean, U.S. State Department spokesperson Jen Psaki did say that she wasn't aware of the reports, but would there be a reason for the two to want to meet at this point right. behind closed doors? The report was not confirmed. I don't know if there was any talks or not, but if there was, uh, I think the intention from the, the North is pretty clear that they always wanted some channels to get to the U.S. But uh, at this point, the U.S. is busy uh, with the Ukraine and, and the ISIS in, in the Middle East mm -hmm. and the domestic matters. So I think there is a kind of a North Korea fatigue set in in the, in the U.S. side. So uh, North probably at this point, if they realize the whole situation, they only have South to talk to at this point. Mm -hmm. And they have to break this hardline stance from the South. And the way of kind of jockeying or, or getting to the, to the favorable situation is to raise the tensions or uh, be uh, difficult uh, in terms of their, their uh, stance. So uh, maybe that's, that's the whole thing that's happening with the sports diplomacy and their uh, sudden pull out of the cheerleading squad. But they're still sending 200 some athletes to, uh, to the games, Asian games. So they're not saying that they were going to pull out and the, the talk is all stopped. So I think there's a little bit of kind of tit for tat. Mm -hmm. Well, in my opinion, better sending the athletes than uh, the cheerleading squad and not sending the athletes. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, anyway, September Inchon Asian Games, uh, many people see that as a beacon of hope for perhaps a positive things to come between mm -hmm. South and North Korea. Uh, in your opinion, can we count on that? Well, uh, as I stated earlier, I think both sides want to talk and they want to use this sports diplomacy or event uh, to become uh, some kind of uh, stepping stone or the, the springboard to get to the next phase. But the real difficulty is that we ultimately have the nuclear issue with the North and I don't think they're going to budge anytime soon on that issue. So uh, I expect that we're going to make some progress, I think, and probably will result in uh, having s uh, some progress, especially in the, in the uh, Kumgang San tour side or other uh, economic collaborations. But ultimately, it's going to be tough to crack that n uh, core issue of mm -hmm. nuclear in the North. Mm -hmm. If only we can maintain such a, uh, small relations, whether it be through sports or cultural exchanges, it would be great, but it's difficult with North Korea with uh, their frivolous uh, attitude. Right. They're predictably unpredictable. Mm -hmm. uh, we have lived with that for so many years now. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, as you said, I think that maintaining a somewhat of a softer relationship uh, could be uh, the best we can hope for, because uh, that way we can hope for some a better relationship down the road. Mm -hmm. So will there be a high-level inter-Korean talks? We'll be following that uh, closely. Thank you very much, Professor, for coming in today. Thank you. One day entry ban. We're all digging deeper, getting to the bottom of stories that impact your life, talking with you on air and online, connecting you with experts on the world's most pressing issues. News and current affairs at its best. With Na Hyung Young and Daniel Che. Arirang News. Arirang News. Arirang News. On early edition at 6. A deadly Ebola virus has already infected more than 3,000 people in West Africa, and the World Health Organization warns that the number could reach 20,000 if proper action is not taken. But there is hope as an experimental drug proven to be effective on monkeys will soon be tested on humans. Our Kwanzua tells us more. 
The WHO warned on Thursday that the number of Ebola cases could rise to 20,000 as the infection is spreading at an uncontrollable speed. The virus has already killed more than 1,500 people, and there are at least 3,000 reported cases as of now. But the health agency believes the actual number could be up to four times higher than that. A high-level official at the WHO says the agency has been caught off guard by the scale of this outbreak. That's not saying we expect 20,000 cases. That is not saying we would uh, ac accept, more importantly, 20,000 cases. I think that's completely unacceptable. The WHO is calling for a full-scale humanitarian response to the crisis, and that's going to require a lot of money. Going forward, this is going to cost, we estimate, $489 million over the next six months. Um, it is a big operation. We're talking um, well over 12,000 people operating over multiple geographies in very, very difficult and high-risk circumstances. It's expensive. There's some hope on the horizon, though. An experimental Ebola vaccine developed by U.S. and British-based health institutes will soon be tested on humans. Tests have already proven successful on monkeys, and the initial human trial will be conducted on around 20 healthy adults at a National Health Institute of Health clinic in Maryland next week. If everything goes well, the second phase is expected to take place in Africa after strict scientific and ethical standards are met. Kwon Suwa, Arirang News. If you've recently bought an iPhone 5C, get ready for heartbreak because come September 9th, iPhone will be introducing the new iPhone 6 model at a media event is scheduled that day in Cupertino, California. It will come a year after Apple introduced the iPhone 5S and 5S C, 5C rather, and a week after its arch rival Samsung is set to unveil its Galaxy Note 4 tablet. Reports say one or both models of the iPhone 6 with display sizes measuring 4.7 and 5.5 inches could be coming. And there are also expectations that Apple's long-awaited iWatch will be released on the same day. A fall is a time for wedding bliss here in Korea, and mm -hmm. it's fast approaching. And apparently we have some good news for those who are concerned about the budget. Right. Weddings in Korea used to be extravagant affairs, but lately a growing number of newly, soon-to-be newlyweds are paying more attention to details and having more practical way of getting married. Kani Kim tells us why. Skipping the conventional photo shoot and dropping the bride and groom gift exchange process is what these newlyweds did when preparing for their wedding back in May. They rented a small house in the city for their wedding and only invited close friends and family. We didn't want to spend a lot on a typical wedding ceremony like others, so we decided to skip the expensive gift exchanges between families. Even our wedding rings were only $500. All the money the couple saved will go to a second honeymoon. More pairs are choosing to cut down the frills, and it's no wonder because saying I do in Korea can be an extravagant affair. Check out the statistics for yourself. With an average 24,000 U.S. dollars that a couple spends on preparing for marriage, about one-fifth is spent on hunsu, a wedding tradition. Hunsu consists of furniture and other household items a bride buys to fill her new home that has been purchased by the groom, and it's symbolic of old patriarchal traditions. With Korea's long-standing patriarchal society slowly fading and soon-to-be-married couples looking for a special experience, one-of-a-kind wedding ceremonies are on the rise. And industry insiders back this up, saying an increasing number of couples these days are going against wedding norms. In Korea, there's an increasing number of people who have lived abroad and naturally they have become receptive to the different wedding cultures. I think it has contributed to the recent growing number of couples holding unique weddings. Pang says requests for chapel weddings and house weddings have become more popular to tie the knot while making ends meet. Connie Kim, Arirang News.
And it's time for the latest weather forecast. Let's find out what the weekend has in store for us. Weather-wise, Michelle Park is standing by. Michelle? Happy Friday, guys. Every, uh, and we've had a beautiful weather to finish off the week here in the capital. However, rain is expected to fall in the central region and Gyeongsangbuk-do province and most of the northern regions tonight. But luckily, there is no sign of rain this weekend. But it looks like we are getting the last bit of the heat. And it's hot during the days and cooler in the mornings and nights. And by the looks of things, most of the lows will be lingering into the low 20s. So make sure you are prepared for all conditions. Now going over to our temperature readings. So we'll top out this um, Saturday morning at 20 before reaching up to 31 degrees in the afternoon. In all the southern cities such as Daegu and Busan will top out to 28 and 26 degrees. Now moving over to other regions, Jeju Island tops over to 25, while Tokyo hits 22 and Mangkungang tops out at 25. Well now that's all for now. I'm Shaw Park and have a wonderful Friday evening. Thank you for that, Michelle, and that's all we have for you this week. Thank you for staying with us. To our viewers in different time zones, have a wonderful day. This has been Daniel Che. And I'm Nai Hyung Kyung. To our viewers in Korea, have a great rest of the evening and a happy weekend as well. Daniel and I will be back on Monday.